Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is David Hussein, and I'm with Andrew Greer, and this is Walk the Walk Wednesdays. Welcome. This is a call that we have weekly where we talk about actual projects like case studies uh, that are development projects, investment projects, um, really anything in the real estate space that produces money um, for profit. And so we're going to go ahead and get started uh, here in a second. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for joining. I was just uh, doing our introduction, which is Walk the Walk Wednesdays. Um, Walk to Walk Wednesdays is basically um, a online class that we have every single week where we talk about income producing projects in real estate, uh, whether it is a uh, Airbnb or a multifamily development. We take a project that was cre uh, taken from what it was and turn into a development project or something that's going to produce money for profit, not just a residence. So um, that's what we do. And that's what we're doing today. We're talking about um, a Mission Hills spec built custom home development that happened on a single family uh, lot um, that is just coming to finish. Um, Andrew Greer, um, actually, uh, he's going to be joining in just one second. Uh, he partnered with somebody that had a number of code violations on a single family home. And uh, he was basically able to purchase the property for a very cheap price. Using the Subdivision Act, he subdivided the properties, and now uh, he's going to be sharing what he's built on that single-family lot in Mission Hills and what he's uh, actually sold them for. Uh, he's, he's an escrow in two of the three. So, uh, Andrew, are you with us on the call here? Yeah, one second, Dave. One second, one no second, problem. one second. That's okay, bud. Trying to get... Um, is my audio on? Yeah, yeah. we can hear All you. All right, good. Hey, everybody, one second. I have somebody trying to get into one of the properties right now. Let me. <laughs> um, the joys of being a landlord. No, nah, it's, it's a listing. <laughs> okay. All right. How's everybody doing today? Sorry, we're having issues. Here's with those photos coming over. Dave, do you think you could airdrop those to yours and then you could screen share from your side for me? Yeah, I don't mind doing it at all. No yeah, so that way we could do that. Let me pull up the original. How's everyone doing today? Thanks for hopping on. Sorry, it's a little crazy right here. Me and David have been running around this morning getting ready for the holiday party. So if you guys don't know about the holiday party, I'm going to tell you right now while I pull this up. Um, we have a big holiday party on December 7th. The link to that is bestholidaypartyever.com. And uh, we throw a big party. We raise um, money for Toys for Tots. So you don't need to bring a toy. You actually, your ticket goes directly to the toys. Um, so that is what we're doing. It's going to be a blast. Um, hope to see everybody there. We have announcer, the flipper of the year. Best flip, biggest transformation, diamond in the rough. We have an ugly sweater contest. And then this year we're going to have live wrestling to announce flipper of the year. So it's going to be a bunch of fun. So hope to see everyone there. Best holiday party ever.com is the domain. If it's on the internet, it must be true. So uh, that is what we're going to be doing. So Dave, if you want to, you can go ahead and turn that off for a second here. Um, all right. So I'm going to talk about this property and what it was. So I'm going to go back to a previous image for you guys to see. So let me share my screen. This property is located in Middletown and uh, or Midtown. If you're not familiar, it's a part of town right there between Bakers Hill and Mission Hill. Everyone, you know, doesn't know which one it is. Um, so this property is located right here. And what was going on was right here previously. And I bet I could actually get it on here. Let's see if I can show it. Previously, this home had a been a code violation house. They had actually converted this garage that you, you see here into a unit and uh, had a lot of overgrowth and a lot of things going on and they had to cure those violations and they weren't in a position where they could um so they had to sell so we ended up coming in and buying this property um i actually went through the process of trying to permit this piece of property here into another unit but it was a few years back and they weren't as lenient on it so it didn't make a ton of sense so what we did is we ended up demoing out that unit we kept this house rented it for a few years while we did permits and 
what we wanted to do here was build three luxury spec homes. Um, and the reason why is as you look out this way, it's hard to tell in this photo, but that is Point Loma right there. This is all the bay. You can see the ocean right here. And when you're at these properties, you just have massive, expansive views. So I used what was called and currently is called the small lot subdivision. And what that did was it allowed me, I could actually turn this into four parcels using that, um, using the small lot subdivision act. And um, I went for three because I didn't want the lots to be too small. I wanted to make sure we had enough room for parking and everything else. Now, the downside here is it was a brand new piece of code and the code wasn't the same as it is now. So it wasn't as loose on the rules for parking and all these different things that tied into this. So it actually took us a really long time. It took us over three years to get this permit because it was a discretionary permit. Um, we had to go through community approval. We had to go through community meetings. I had to go to city council. It went through a lot of stuff to get approved, but what we ended up doing is approving it to build three homes. So we started construction on these last November, no, last October. And one of the downsides with starting your construction at this time of year is that you get a ton of rain. So we got it ready, we got set up, we were ready to go, but then it would just keep raining and we couldn't actually pour our foundations. So it ended up taking us until after Valentine's Day to actually be able to pour the foundations while we were just waiting for the rain to stop. So David, if you actually wanna cut over to those photos now, that'd be perfect. I'm gonna turn off the screen share here. Um, so we went through that process, got those permitted, and now what we have is three bedroom, three and a half bath homes with a office on the bottom floor. So there are three individual homes. So the key here with small lot subdivision is they actually get to end up fee simple. So when they're fee simple, they're not going to be townhomes. They're not condos. Additionally, they have um, no HOA and no shared use agreements. And these are all great for allowing you to have better financing, less restrictions on the home based on neighbors. Um, you actually own the land that you're on. You aren't, you know, tied in with somebody else and they're all separate. So you'll see here the, the setbacks between them are quite small because that is how the small lot subdivision works. So we have, you know, well, airspace in between here. And then Dave, do you have one showing the next house? or not. Um, so we have that space in between here. Um, there's three separate homes. And currently we've actually put the homes, we put them on market. We're putting the last one back on market this week. Um, and we've got them in escrow for amazing prices. 2.2 um, .2 million here, 2.6 million here. This one's listing at 2.3 million. And we were able to, because they came in early enough and released the money and did hard deposits for the work that we were able to actually do custom finishes for them on certain items. Um, so it allowed them to have a little bit more taste in the home, where they wanted to do it, what they wanted to set up. But they're really, um, they're really excited about it. It was actually funny. Um, when we started this project, I thought that we were going to have people, you know, early 30s, maybe early 40s moving into these, possibly... Um, single individuals who were wanting to be close to downtown, but everyone that's buying it is a couple. They're either in their 60s or their late 40s. And it is exactly the opposite of the demographic that I thought we were gonna get. Um, that could have to do with the purchase price. Um, so, but that's what those homes are. And really like what I'd say here is one, we need single family housing. So it was really great to do a single family housing project. The downside is it's so difficult to get it done and so costly. Um, it's basically impossible to build a entry-level home right now in San Diego because if you're going to sell something, and I'm going to say entry-level is around $750, by the time you pay all your permit fees, grade the land, and are ready to go, and you've purchased the land, you might be into that property for $500,000, $600,000 just with that work done and those permits. So it makes it really hard. You can't build the house for a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars. You need to spend, you know, four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. 
And on a project like this, we're spending about 1.1 to 1.2 million on the homes. So it becomes very difficult to enter the market. So it was nice to put some projects out there. But then additionally, um, this project itself, now you could actually go in there with the new zoning changes and put 24 plus units on that lot, which is crazy. So you could put essentially a bunch of studios, but you can put that many units on there. So it doesn't drive the investors to actually go through the process of doing three custom homes because 24 rentals is going to do better. So it's a really interesting position to be in. I will say I've built several homes and several apartments. Um, I generally like apartments more, but I do really enjoy this project. So I might try and do a little bit more on the luxury home side. Um, but it's been it's been a blast. And what questions do you guys have about this? What can I answer for you on it? Um, let me know. You can either raise your hand or type it in the chat or just unmute yourself. Just let me know. Hey, Andrew, I was just wondering, what was the offsets on that, on those uh, three? Because they look pretty tight. Yeah, so there is a 24-inch um, setback on one and a 36-inch set, 36 setback on the next one. So uh, with the small lot subdivision, I believe you're allowed to go down to 12 inches. Uh, what happens there is it becomes more and more difficult to actually stucco and do the work. So you want to get a little bit wider. Um, and then secondarily, they can't actually touch. So they have to be actually separate. They can't, you know, even have like an air gap, which is like the standard old townhome way of doing things. You have these buildings they are separate, but there's an air gap. So there's like a little small space in between. You can't do that. And additionally, when you have these spaces, you don't get the right fire clearances. So you can't put the same type of windows. You can't do a lot of things on the building that you want to do because of fire spacing. So you'll see on this, if you're at the property, we have the you know 24 inches and then we have a patio door that goes out. Well, that patio is five feet wide to make sure that we have the fire setback of at least seven feet once that door is open. So that way you can go up. So we actually have to push that in and make sure it lines up appropriately. So that way it's not too close when the door opens for fire reasons. Additionally, all that glass on this, this entire building, every single window is tempered because of the design. So it makes it more expensive, but we also went crazy on the windows, it's full casement windows. It's beautiful. Um, so you get a ton of natural light and a ton of light um, airflow through the home. But yeah, so that that's what those setbacks are. Oh, okay. Okay. So you, you could, you could kind of squeeze in between, like you could walk between the two. Yeah. So one of them, you can vary the one that's 36 inches is yeah. easily walkable. Um, The other one that's 24. I mean, you can get through it. It's not, it's a little imposing because it's three stories up next to you. So you're like, what, <laughs> this is really tight, but right. you can't, you can't get through it. Um, yeah. But it is imposing for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so and there's no windows, so no one sees you. So you can easily skedaddle through. Hmm. So, okay. Okay. so I was looking for an opportunity to use skedaddle today. So I'm very excited. <laughs> so <laughs> any other questions? Andrew, if, if you were to go back uh, today and you had acquired this home, um, would you do the same thing with the property? No, no, I actually, I would have gone townhome. Um if I went in townhomes, I wouldn't have had to do a discretionary permit um, because they would have been connected and townhomes are going to get less money, but versus the time value of money, it would have made sense. So I would have been done with this 2019 if I had done it that way. So we were slow because of the permit. It took forever. And then we were slow because COVID pushed into that permit getting pulled on top of it, which extended things out even further. Um, and then just getting everything lined up. Nice, nice for us. We had good financing and a good setup on the deal. But yeah, no, it was, uh, I would not do a small lot subdivision. There's not a lot of people doing them anymore now because there's just so many other uses of the code. And the other problem is uh, the interpretation and 
the lack of gray area that the city is available to step into makes it difficult. So, yeah, that's uh, that's where we were at on that one. And are you currently, do these houses, are they for sale or are you currently uh, in escrow on any of them? Two of them are in escrow. Uh, one will be back, back on market. I'm actually planning on putting it on caravan tomorrow. Um, so if anyone's going to the Metro Caravan, you can check her out. Um, that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to let people walk through the home that day too. So that should be um, a ton of fun as far as like seeing the property, checking it out and seeing how it's going. I love it. What's your favorite part about this project? Roof deck by far. Roof deck in the kitchen. The kitchen's bananas. Um, we don't have any good photos of the kitchen right now. We will have some this week because the waterfall cabinets or waterfall countertops and cabinets are in now. So it actually shows like we can see what it looks like because we designed it, but it's hard for other people to understand it. So really excited about that going up. So, so what's the biggest challenge or lesson learned from this one? Um, I'd say the biggest lesson learned is don't go into what's considered a discretionary project. This became discretionary when we did small lot subdivision. Um, discretionary means that there's community voting, community involvement on it. Um, so I don't just turn in plans and get it permitted. I turn in a design. The design goes to the um, local neighborhood council, gets approved, goes to the city council, gets approved. Then you do permits. Um, with what's called a by right project. That means you're building to the code what's allowed in the area exactly. You don't have to get any community approval. So that whole process of community approval gets ripped off the deal and you just go in with plans for the project and you move much quicker. Um, I've bought several projects after this that I've already built and have people living in as rentals um, that we've owned and had renting for over two years while this one's been sitting, trying to get done. So that's my my biggest lesson learned is no more discretionary permitting. So unless it's like a passion project, but I'm not at that phase of my career. <laughs> Can I ask what's the difference between like a discretionary permit and a ministerial permit? Uh, how far? How so? Okay, so you're saying I would never do or won't do, unless it's a passion project, I won't do another uh discretionary permit project uh so the alternative must be by right or ministerial like what what is the yeah alternative? yeah by right so it's what the code allows strictly by right so the code didn't allow up front for these lots to be split without going through a discretionary process so the unit count was allowed but the splitting was not allowed so that's what we got the ministerial permit for and that's what the difference was so I would go in and make these as townhomes or a multi-unit project. And that would be allowed without going through the process. Since I split them and made them smaller lots than everybody else, it was uh, it affected by that, essentially. Could you have fit four townhomes here? Uh, four townhomes? You could have, but they would have been crappy. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Like, they would have... I would have built more building and got less dollars. So yeah. that was our, because of the way the hill is, we, it just, it becomes difficult. So another pro tip, hillside building, highest values, because you generally get a view. That's the idea. Um, also highest cost. So it, it comes, it comes with its own, you know, bag of goods per se. Uh, how much time would you have saved had you not gone discretionary permit and subdivision? On this one, probably three years. Three years. And so how much less would they have sold for? A lot less. A lot less. I don't, I don't even know. One five, one four. But the big thing there was I was also affected by COVID. Yeah. So it, it affected it that way. Damn, three years is so long, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. So long and it, the property just sits vacant or sits or, or rented. Yeah, we had a rent like yeah, we had right. a rent so yeah. it worked out, but it was no fun. So, uh, 
And then your return on investment, what percentage are you looking at returned uh, from invested money, not time? I haven't calculated that out yet. Okay. I don't actually. I I rear I look at it up front and then I look at it when it's done. But yeah, it, so much time has passed. Affect, I don't want it to affect how we're doing the deal. Yeah, I understand. So okay. awesome. Cool. Anybody have any other questions? So tomorrow we have throwback Thursday. Is it 1.30, Dave? Yes. So 1.30 throwback Thursday going over real estate skills. Are we going to have Jonathan Fisher on for that one, Dave? No. not it's no. He's going to be in January. Okay. So it'll be David tomorrow. And then we're actually just going to be doing the real estate mastermind next week. And then we basically go dark um, through the holidays just because everyone's out doing so many different things. So hopefully we see you tomorrow and next Thursday. We might do the mastermind one or two more times, but as the holidays come up, I feel like it's like holiday season where everyone's going to holiday parties, doing their things, traveling. So best holiday party ever.com for the next holiday party you're going to go to. And uh, thank you for tuning in today, guys. Have a great day. Stay focused. It's the end of the year. It's not even December yet, so don't act like it is. So we'll see you guys soon. Cheers. <laughs>